Thank you very much for that warm introduction. Thank you for having me here today. Today I want to talk about how to get an MBA just in a couple of minutes. So with, when you look at an MBA set of courses, there are really a few core truths in each course. And if you understand those core truths, the rest of it just flows. The rest of it is very natural. So let's take a look at a couple of different subject areas. We're going to take a look at technology, entrepreneurship, in other words, starting companies, supply chain management, marketing, project management, and strategy in the 21st century. And when you look at each one of these topic areas, there's a lot of content, a lot of knowledge around these topic areas. But it's not all about effectiveness and efficiency, which tends to be the MBA mantra. Everything is about effectiveness and efficiency. When I ask an MBA student what's the answer to a, a question, they immediately say it's all about effectiveness and efficiency. But in fact, there's a core truth to each subject area. And if you understand that core truth, everything flows. Technology, by technology, we typically teach information technology as opposed to, let's say, life sciences or, or biotech or health technologies. We typically teach information technologies. And in information technologies, the core truth is it's all about decisions and collaboration, making sure the right information is at the right place, right person, the right time for them to make that decision. We need to talk also about collaboration because people work together, so we need tools to pass that information around. Underneath that, we talk about different kinds of technology. So we might talk about databases for storing information. We might talk about business intelligence for viewing or for understanding the organization. Or we might talk about telecommunications for the flow of information between people. But the core truth is information technology is about decisions and collaboration. Starting companies. Sometimes it's referred to as entrepreneurship. In entrepreneurship, we borrow the idea from the finance industry that every new venture, every new initiative should have an understanding of risk and return. And that's the same with a new initiative, a new venture. If we understand the risk and the return of it, we understand everything. Let's take a look at that. We may have business plans and business models, but in business plans, business models, it's all about facts and assumptions. Facts are items in which you can verify, I can verify, independently verifiable. Assumptions are things that I may believe to be true. For example, I may believe that the market will grow by a certain rate, or that customer sales will increase by a certain rate, or that customers will pay a certain price. That's my assumption. But until that comes to into play, we don't know whether that's a fact or not. So entrepreneurship is all about taking time, money, and effort to turn assumptions into facts. Assumptions translated become risks. If we make an assumption that it will be, the world will be better or be worse in the future, this is a risk that it's worse or that it's even too good. That's a risk. What we tend to do is we group our risks sequentially. So we may have a group of risks which are focused on the, the product or the service and its viability. We may have a group of risks about the market and the introduction to that product to the market and the adoption rate. We may have some risks and our assumptions about how the competition will react, about the market growth, etc. So we group each one of these areas together and then through time and effort and money, we sequentially go through turning assumptions into facts. That means that in our business plan, addressing risk and return is a key point. But every section in that business plan, the team, the marketing, the finance, are all about addressing the risk and the return. We need a team that is good at identifying and dealing with risk, for example. Today we're with supply chain management. Can you imagine being in a job environment in which you have to predict the future on a regular basis? That's what they do in supply chain management. They're always making predictions about the future based on faulty information. It could be incomplete or it could be inaccurate. So supply chain management, when we have
have that sort of situation where we don't have the correct amount of information, we cover it by adding inventory. So inventory and information are equated together. The more information or the better information that we have, the less need we have for inventory. So supply chain management is understanding that information flows up and down that supply chain. And what we are trying to do, all the strategy and tactics that we might want to put into place, such as vendor managed inventory, is all about reducing the level of uncertainty around that information flow. That's all supply chain management is. Let's take a look at marketing. Marketing is understanding the market, which means the competition and our customers, figuring out what it is that the customers value, designing a product or service that matches or fulfills that value. That means it's not always about price. Some people buy based on low price, but there are other values that people want. Social belonging is one. Innovativeness, convenience. It's understanding what people value and then figuring out how to give them that value. Project management. When we're trying to change our organization in some way, project management is the approach to move from one state of the organization to another state. So project management is all about change, implementing change. Project management then boils down to one core truth, and that is communication. We are communicating with not only the team implementing the change, but also those influenced or influencing that change. And understanding that we, as a project manager, have to make sure that everyone has the right information to not only make decisions and implement decisions, that's the core of it. Strategy. Strategy is all about obtaining or achieving our goals. We have a goal of some kind, and we're trying to implement that. So strategy is this two parts, both implementation and planning. And an implementation in the 21st century is really key. Not enough just to plan, it's actually putting it into place. It's actually making it happen where the key difference is. So for the 21st century, what are the strategic advantages that we're trying to put into place? In my opinion, there are really two. One is truth. We have seen enough organizations around the world that we as consumers or businesses can't trust. We can't do business with them. We don't trust that they have our best interests at heart. So truth, or the ability to have integrity in your organization, is in my opinion a key strategic advantage in the 21st century. If we can have our customers trust us, we're way ahead of the competition. The other one is innovation and creativity. Innovation is the process to put new ideas into place or to create new ideas. Creativity is those new ideas and perspectives. If we have an organization that has the ability to constantly think up new ideas and be creative and put those into place, that is a key competitive advantage. Between those different core truths, we have now got what an MBA is in just a few minutes. Thank you very much. Good question. I talked about creativity and innovation being strategic competitive advantages in the 21st century. But from the manager's point of view, the ability to put those into place is really excellent. But from the manager's point of view, there are really three skills that we need to have. That is the ability to see competing concepts or competing ideas and understand the connection between the two of them. So if I have two theories or two practical ideas, they should be able to understand them. So for example, the product life cycle and the adoption innovation theory is a very simple example. They should be able to understand how those two connect together. They should be able to understand how to implement things. As I talked about in the section on strategy, we need to have the ability not just to plan, but to actually put it into place. Project management strategy and marketing, uh, in fact, all of those fields, it's implementation and the ability to execute properly. The last area is the ability to understand implications. When I presented these three topic areas, we can see that there are connections between them. So if I'm doing something in marketing, we should be able to understand its effect on leadership or the corporate culture. So whatever the world is 
not just isolated parts anymore, it's a system. And we should be able to understand how those system parts fit together. That's implementation. So it's the connections between different ideas, how to implement, and the implications between ideas. Anybody else? I think I can uh, give you two tips. The first one is to make sure that if you're starting a, a business that you have a, an advisor of some kind, you want somebody that's actually been there and done that. Because the number one, the number one issue about new businesses is the management team. It's the people. We need to make sure that if we're starting a new organization that we have that management team in there. That's the number one most important thing of a new company. The other thing that I would suggest is that when you're starting a new business and you have an opportunity you're looking at, make sure that it follows either a trend that's happening in the market, there's a gap in the market that nobody's satisfying, or there's a recognized problem in the market that you're going to provide a solution for. Make sure that your new business sits on one or more of those three. Make sure that your management team is up for the job. 